Well, I don't know. Dick Houston might run like a deer. He's in studio today. He's the past president of the Parable Rotary Club, and I have been so looking forward to today's show because, well, I'm a history buff, Dick. And you've got a slice of history you're going to tell us about. We absolutely do. I just uh, need you to get closer to that mic if you could. Yeah, we absolutely do have some uh, history you, you, uh, coming up. You can lower it, Dick, and, and uh, get it right near your your voice. There you go. Okay. Oh, hopefully people can hear you. Well, I hope so too, because uh, we're going to talk about Rotary today, what we do in the community, and we're going to talk about the mural that we're going to go up and be dedicated tomorrow. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Of course, we have kind of seen it. We have. We uh, The mural's going to be a copy of a uh, painting that was done in the late 50s. Uh, it was put together by Northern Natural Gas and used as an advertisement for uh, their company. Yeah, and the story behind this is Kim Anderson, chamber president, saw this, purchased it, right? And then she brought it up to the Rotary, I would guess. That's exactly right. Uh, we tried a couple of designs uh, for our mural that we uh, hoped to put up. Uh, they didn't meet the, what, the standards that needed to be done and the regulations that uh, were forthcoming from the city. And so Peter Waldock and uh, Kim and myself and Ann Millier from Brushworks sat down and uh, were discussing what, uh, what could we come up with now that would be approved. And Kim went into her office and brought this painting out and she said, what do you think of that? Oh my. And uh, in unison almost, everybody said, yeah, that's perfect. And the reason it was perfect is that refurbished clock that you guys were so instrumental in getting refurbished is in the picture. It absolutely is. It's right in the center of the picture, so it ties in so well. The uh, Rotary Club uh, this past summer uh, raised enough money to get the security bank clock uh, completely refurbished. It took about $25,000 to do that and the people from Rotary, the people from the uh, community came together and we raised that money and got that done. And now we have the uh, mural coming up which features that clock right in the center of the mural. Yeah, it's going to be going up on the Faribault Vacuum and Sewing Center building on the east side of the building. I have a picture of the west side of the building up on our website kdhlradio.com because it shows the signage of the building so you know what the building is but it's going on the other side of the building. Yes, it'll go on the east side near the top. Um, as you come up to the stoplight from the east, you're gonna be able to have that view and, and uh, you're gonna be able to see what Faribault was like in the late 50s. I uh, moved here in 1964 and the uh, painting depicts just exactly what I saw when I walked downtown the first time. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah, it, it, it's really fun. I used to bank at the security bank, you know, I walk under that clock to go into the bank almost uh, once a week or more, you know. Yeah. I'm going to have to do a little research on the bank. I don't know if you remember when it closed or anything like that, but we'll have to maybe do a little research and do a post on it. You know, I don't remember when it closed, but it was a fun place to do business with. Dick Peavy was the president, and uh, you go in the bank and you say, Dick, I need to borrow some money, and he'd say, how much, and you'd tell him, and and I'd say, what was the interest? And Dick would say, oh, maybe 8%. And i say, Dick, no, that's, that's too much. And he'd put a cigar in his mouth and light it up and huh. put his feet up on the desk. And he'd say, what do you think? And I said, maybe 6 And And uh, 10 minutes later, I'd walk out with the money I had for 7%. Yeah, gee, you should have gone to 3 or 4 Dick. <laughs> I know. I've, I've never been that smart. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So anyway, what a great story. Banking's changed a bit over the years, hasn't it? Oh my gosh, you go in to borrow money like that now and you got a stack of papers about a half inch thick. Yeah, no, no kidding. We're going to talk more with Dick about Rotary, as he mentioned, and all the good things they do in the community, but our primary focus today will be on that the mural. He's got a picture of it. We're going to show it to you on camera for those who will be watching on YouTube. So stay tuned for that when AM Minnesota Care Service. Call 583-2144. Metal Services of Blooming Prairie serving the community for over 30 years. AM Minnesota today. Dick Houston is in studio. He's the past president of Faribault Rotary Club. He's going to tell us what that is in a moment. Jim Hagedorn will be with us next Tuesday. He's running for U.S. Congress as we begin our hope to get 
the uh, folks that are running for office in studio. It's not always easy in mid-morning to get these people to come by. We hope they do. Monday, Dusty Deans, the fire chief, will be with us. Next week is Fire Prevention Week. I know we're going to talk about smoke alarms. Uh, I'm a, a poster child for having smoke alarms too long in my home. I think I've, well, I've lived there 25 years, and I haven't replaced them. And I don't think I put them in when I bought the place, so they could be even older than that. I told Dusty the other day, I test them every spring and fall, they still go off, and he said that may not mean that they'll work in a fire, but we'll talk more about that on Monday's AM Minnesota show. Wednesday, we'll talk about the the Arts Guild Studio Arts Tour. We've got some uh, folks in next Thursday from uh, Main Street, downtown Faribault, uh, Tom Hartman. It will be with us next Friday to tell us about the inductees into the Faribault Sports Hall of Fame. Yes, the class of 2016, which will be on the 21st, I believe, is the banquet. And so he will be with us next Friday to give us all the details about those inductees. That will be a lot of fun. And I have booked a show with the executive director of the American Red Cross Southeast Minnesota chapter, Melanie Cheetah, will be with us. I think that's how you pronounce her name. She lives in Rochester. That just so happens to be National Boss Day. What do you think of that day? Well, you know, I haven't had a boss now for about 52 years, except at home, because uh, I've always owned my own business or been in partnership with folks. You've been your own boss. I have been. Yeah, you'd like that. So if you could, please, <clears throat> tell us what the Faribault Rotary is, what the Rotary is. The Faribault Rotary Club and Rotary itself is a international organization. Uh, we're in 220 countries now with 1.2 million members uh, across the world. Uh, and we're based upon providing service above self. That's our motto. And uh, Rotarians, when they are inducted into the Rotary Club, tell the club itself that they're willing to put service above self. And that happens in so many ways. In Faribault, uh, some of the things that we do is uh, we provide the uh, leadership for the Little Soccer Program, Little Feet Soccer Program. There's about 250 kids involved with that. Those are grade school kids. Uh, we have the Strive Program, which is a program for uh, high school kids. They meet, I think, eight times a year prior to class they, at uh, 7 a.m., so they're getting up early. And our Rotary members teach them things that they're going to need once they graduate from high school. Uh, it's a very good program. And then we provide about $20,000 in scholarships to those high school students. In addition to that, we do things like ring the bell for the Salvation Army, we do blood drives, we do meals on wheels. Uh, we have a camp out by uh, Cedar Lake that's used uh, every weekend during the summer by scout groups or other organizations to, uh, to enhance their, their own programs. We uh, have exchange students that come from foreign countries. This year we have a boy from Germany and a boy from Colombia. And we have two students that have gone uh, to other countries. We have a, a gal that went to Italy and another one that went to Thailand, and they're there right now for the year. Uh, my wife and I uh, had an exchange student at our house uh, for this past spring. And I think we're the, probably the oldest exchange parents uh, around, but it was really fun. Uh, Maggie came to our house uh, in March. She stayed uh, until July, and it was fun. We hadn't had anybody in our house getting ready for prom since uh, for 28 years. Well, there you go. And so Nancy, you know, did the hair bit and the nails, and we took the photos and all those kinds of things and went to the Grand March. So it was a great thing, and I would encourage people in the community to think about having a student living in their home. Uh, they bring so much fresh ideas and uh, give you a different outlook on the world when you have those young people. The Rotary students spend three months in each home and uh, during the school year. So if you have a student come in in August, probably going to go to the next home in Thanksgiving time and then on to the next one three months later. So it's not a long-term commitment, but boy, it is, it is really fun. So you don't have to do one for the whole school year, you divvy it up among three different homes. That's correct, yeah. And so we, we're looking right now for for host parents for the 
for these two boys and uh, for the coming up in uh, later on this fall and there, in the spring. If there are people interested, Dick, how do they, you know, did they call you or what would They could call me or contact any Rotarian. Uh, Lisa Humphill Wilson is, or Wilson Hump is the uh, chairman of that. She does a great job. She has an office down uh, on Main Street, her chiropractic office. And so she's our leader, but you could talk to anybody, Jake Cook or Brent Peruca, myself, Murray Hansen, uh, any one of the Rotary members. And Jake is now the president. Jake is the current president, that's correct. You are the past president, Dick Houston with us today. Primarily I asked Dick to be here because he's got this mural, well the Rotary has a mural that they're putting up on the Faribault Vacuum and Sewing Building. Now the mural's not up yet, so I took a picture of the west side of the building when the mural's actually going on the east side because on the west side there's a sign that tells you what the building is and I wanted people to know what building the mural is going on. He's holding up the picture right now for those people who will be watching on YouTube. I would highly recommend you do that. What a great scene. That looks like it's out of a movie, Dick. Yeah, isn't that a wonderful scene? It's so colorful and uh, and you can tell the the vintage of it by looking at the two cars on there. There's a 57 Chevrolet and I think it's probably a 52 Ford. Yeah, And uh, a bicycle there. Yep, and uh, I owned a bicycle similar to that, and I owned cars, both of those cars at one time. Not the ones in the pictures, obviously, but, but uh, cars of those vintage. I'm going to guess this is a painting off of a picture, a photo that was taken. No, it's an original painting. Oh, it is? Yeah, okay. it was an original They just painting. made up the characters, then, you're saying? Yes, yep. So it... Uh, so this dashing woman in the picture never existed? except in the imagination of a painter. That's exactly right, yeah. Well, doggone, now I'm all bummed out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. But that, I love the clock in the background. As you said, it's in the center of the picture. Yeah, uh, that really ties in nicely with the project that we dedicated this summer. And again, this is going up tomorrow. What time is the dedication? Dick? Dedication's going to be at 1 o'clock. Um, we'll... Uh, I think Jeremy Shavis is going to have some refreshments out there, and uh, we'll have an opportunity to hear from uh, Jake Cook and uh, from Jeremy, who graciously let us put it on his building, and uh, perhaps the mayor might be there. And so uh, we're going to make it an event. Uh, we want people to see us, the uh, dedication of this, and and know that Rotary has done a, another service to this community. Yeah. Well, this was. Uh, the clock was refurbished in part as in honor of uh, Mr. Burkhardtsmeyer, right? Absolutely. Uh, Al Burkhardtsmeyer was a very unique Rotarian. Uh, <laughs> he, he did not miss a meeting in 52 years. Isn't that something? And we have weekly meetings. If he couldn't make it in Faribault, Al would go to Northfield or wherever he might be um, and uh, make up a meeting there. We have a thing in with Rotary across the country that each of us has a small banner or small flag. And so Al would exchange flags where he would go on vacation. We have a flag from Hawaii that Al went to Rotary in Hawaii one time. So yeah, he was a great Rotarian and, and certainly a, a great advocate for downtown Faribault. Oh yeah, and delightful so, guy. Uh, one of the things that he wanted to have done uh, when he was nearing death was to refurbish his clock. And so uh, their family provided some money for that. And Kim Anderson really took the bull by the horns and, and was very instrumental in making this project come to fruition. The clock we're talking about and the mural now because she bought the painting, right? Yeah, it was her painting. It was a painting that she uh, had purchased. And, uh, and so she, she was the uh, origin of this this whole mural as far as what we're seeing right now. There's little kids on the street. We talked about the bike, the parking meters. They were downtown then, huh? The parking meters? Yes, definitely, yeah. Those, uh, those are things of the past, that's for sure. Well, I'm glad we don't have those anymore. I guess everybody is, yeah. <laughs> Again, Dick Houston is with us. He's the past president of the Faribault Rotary Club. They'll be dedicating this mural at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. If you drive by there now, you won't see anything out there. You're going to put this up, or they're going to put this up this afternoon, right? That's the plan, yeah. They're, uh, I was in there yesterday, and they were nearly done painting, and they said that they were probably going to start sometime around lunch or after lunch today. Take uh, three, four hours to, to get it attached to the wall. Okay. 
And they'll, of course, have a covering over it, and then you'll unveil it, take off the covering. No, they aren't going to cover it. And the reason they aren't going to cover it, uh, we talked about doing that, is that with the paint this fresh, there may be possibility of some damage. Oh, okay, so no cover. One thing that was kind of neat, when I was in there yesterday, they handed me a paintbrush. And so there's one line on there. That you got to paint. That, that came from my hand. They, they asked if I wanted to do more, but I didn't. Uh, so are you part of the sidewalk, the sky, or what? I'm part of the sidewalk. Okay. Did you put your initials in there? I did not. No initials. I would have been tempted, Dick. Yeah. No, I would, I would pass on that. I don't know that I would have done it, but I would have been tempted to do yeah. it. Never came to mind, actually. <laughs> Nobody would have seen it from the street anyway. Exactly. But it looks gorgeous. It's on the side of the building. In fact, I was going to ask, and I didn't, uh, I didn't have time this morning, how many murals we have now in Faribault. I was going to contact somebody with the chamber of the mural society that the city has here in town, and I haven't, I didn't get around to doing that. But I did check some of the murals around the town, and we've got so many awesome murals here. Aren't they just wonderful? Yeah. And, and the first one that uh, Dave painted, you know, the Welcome to Faribault one, is just, just absolutely awesome. And that's, I think, is the only one that he painted directly on the building. Okay. There may be one other, but uh, now he paints some. Uh, in sections uh, and puts them up that way. Yeah, well, makes sense. You know, these buildings will have to be tuck pointed or something, and that way you can remove it, do the refurbishing work, and put it back up. Right, and if they're for some reason uh, they have to be moved, they can be taken down and moved to another location too. Mm -hmm. Right. There's the there's the ice skating scene. Yep. Downtown on the side of the oh shoot, I know it's on the west side of the building. Yes. And there's uh, one on the Erickson Furniture Store. Alexander Faribault, there's yeah. the Viaduct, there's Bruce Smith. Made yeah. a lot of different murals. The Tilt a Whirl one. Yeah. yeah. The one in the. Uh, My favorite is the Pep Parade one on the Central Park Shelter. Yeah. Yeah, they're just so neat. But, uh, I think that, I think I counted them. There's six or seven of them right now. This will be the seventh or eighth, eighth one, I think. Yeah. Well, I suggested to North the other day out of the chamber that we get a <coughs> mural on the side of the KDHL building of the legendary Dean Curtis, you know, on the microphone. And that would be a great idea, uh, yeah. Maybe a tractor in there or something, and a football or something to designate what KDHL is famous for. I think that'd be cool if we get the building refurbished here. I think that'd be very cool, yeah. So North said he knows some people, he's got some connections, and maybe we can make that happen. Yeah, you know, this is this is the first time that uh, a service club has come forward to, to put a mural up. And so I'm hopeful that other organizations, uh, you know, will take up the idea and, and run with it, and, and perhaps they're going to be able to put something of this nature up or assist in putting something of this nature up in the community. Yeah, there's the Flex one, just a couple buildings down from where we're at. Yeah, that's, they're all great, you know, that's, each, each one of them tells a different story. Yeah, and that's what they should do. Yep, and and at the same time be artistic. For sure, this has a lot of color in it. Doesn't it? Yeah, that's what Dan Millier, who is uh, part of Brushwork, right. just really keeps talking about all the vibrant colors in this and how good that's going to look on that wall. It really is. It's going to look awesome. I can hardly wait till it's up, and it'll be up this afternoon, so people will be able to see it. You know, Gordy, this has been a long, long process. We started in January with the idea and um, started talking to folks, uh, contacted Peter Waldock at the city. He's just been awesome and helping shepherd this program through. Uh, and so many people have been so helpful. You know, the chamber has been really helpful. The Rotary Club members themselves have been just very, very good about providing input, uh, and uh, encouragement and to get this done. And so there's been some ups and downs, but it, it sure has been a, a successful thing with a lot of collaboration. So is this the old Oaks department store next door, or where was that located? The store next to the bank? No, Oaks would be farther south. Okay, yeah. what building would that be, do you remember? Next to the bank? I wonder if it isn't the, uh, wasn't a, Ben Franklin store? I'm not oh, okay. absolutely sure. Might have been. I, I was around it, so I wouldn't know. Yeah, I was around and I don't remember. <laughs> That's okay. Not a problem. <laughs> but it just it's a lot of very color, very 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 colorful. It is the uh, Faribault Downtown 
Main Street scene and the new mural that's going to be dedicated tomorrow in downtown Faribault. People are interested in being a member of the Rotary. Do you have to be a business owner or what's the, what are the qualifications? No, you have to be able to, you have to be willing to provide service to the community and uh, that can be done in so many ways obviously. Um, and we, we welcome members all the time. Um, membership is uh, it's is always something that you strive to increase on an ongoing basis and if someone has some interest uh, they can see me or another rotary member and we can make sure that that they get the proper information so that they know uh, what their obligations will be and uh, and the benefits that they'll derive from that I've noticed that Faribault is not the only city to put murals up a lot of communities are are doing this it's kind of the the craze these days yeah, more cities are doing that. In fact, uh, Ann and Dave goes to go to other communities and put murals up. Uh, I think this summer they went to a community, I think possibly in Illinois, and together with other mural painters, uh, provided or put up a lot of murals in just one week's time in that community. Yep, I saw some in a community I was in Galesburg, Illinois, when I was there last year for a <coughs> Carlton football game. They had some murals in some of the buildings. Yeah, and. You know, they've done them in different places, and when I was working on this, it initially Anne sent me some copies of murals that they've done in other communities to get some ideas of what may or may not work in ours. But the beauty here is this is Faribault, through and through. Absolutely. Yeah, this is Faribault. It's, it's downtown Faribault. And Rotary, our, you know, our Rotary Club has been around since 1920, and so we have a lot of history in this community. and. Uh, and so providing this to the to the city I think is, is really really a nice thing to do. 1920 well you have to be one of the oldest chapters. You know we are and I can't remember what number we are uh, but we are one of the older older groups in the in the state. Yeah something to be proud of. Yeah it, it's you know had a lot of continuity when you come into uh, we meet on the third floor of Bernie's and when you come in and you look at the uh, list of presidents we have a plaque up there that uh, shows all the presidents since uh, inception and there's some really neat names names that i remember you know from the times that i first came to town and was impressed by these people and what they did for the community and that kind of thing and uh, it's a virtual who's who of Faribault, huh? yeah a lot of them yeah exactly right and your name is on that same plaque dick that's got to be awesome yeah I mean, i'm with a lot of company a lot of good folks on there yeah you know, when you think about it, you first came to town, you looked up to these folks, and now you're on the same plaque with them. That's right. Yep. That's nice. I, I really like that. When you have these foreign exchange students come into your home, do you ever go visit them in their country? Well, funny you should ask, <laughs> because uh, Rotary also has an exchange program for adults, and we go to have the opportunity to go to other countries uh, for two to three weeks, and we live in homes uh, when we're at that. And I think it was four years ago, I did go to Taiwan on a, on a rotary exchange. Lived with two families there. And um, it, was a, it was a great experience. And then they, in turn, came to Minnesota. And they, they visited uh, three rotary clubs in Minnesota. And they came to Faribault, spent four days here. Uh, four of them stayed at my house. And we did such things as go through the woolen mills. We went through Shattuck. Shattuck was just awesome in hosting them. And, and that was really fun because they had students at Shattuck from Taiwan at that time. Took them out to the country, took them out to Randy Meyer's farm, and he has a robotic milking e equipment. Uh, they were amazed with that. Uh, took them out to Jim Purpose, then they got to ride in a combine and a big tractor and all that kind of stuff. And, and they really thought that was cool because they, they get, uh, most of their beef from us and uh, it's a small country not a lot of agriculture and so they import a lot of food products and uh, most of their beef in Taiwan comes from the United States so they were really interested in going out to Jim's because he was raising beef cattle at that time so uh, it's a great program and it, where you can go and stay with people in the other countries you know when you stay in their homes you learn so much more than just getting on a bus and going from stop to stop. Do you have to know their language? No. No. Uh, most of them speak English. Uh, the first host parents I stayed with both spoke very good English. The second one, the, 
the husband did not speak English, but but the uh, the the wife did. But I've been, you know, I've been in quite a few foreign countries, and, and not knowing the language, I've never seen that as a ever a problem. As a problem, you can always communicate if you treat people right. You know, you, you can always communicate. Yeah. Well, plus I think most other countries do know English. Yeah. At least a bit of enough English to wait on yeah. you in a restaurant or something. Yep. Uh, yeah. Most of Europe and most of Asia actually teach English to, uh, as a required subject. Did you like the food in Taiwan? Yes, yeah. It, the food was good. And, you know, when you talk about the food, you have, you have choices worldwide now of, of all kinds of food. I mean, it's like... There's probably a McDonald's in Taiwan. I don't know. There are oh, McDonald's okay. in lots of places. I, I don't remember one in Taiwan, but well, I know there, there probably is. When we were in Italy last year, <laughs> last April, uh, I won't say who, but some people on our tour, when we were in Rome, so many great restaurants in Rome, Italy, they went to a McDonald's. Yeah. I couldn't help but laugh, and I said, why would, why would we wanted to see what they offered, you know, in, the, in Rome? Well... I'm a Diet Coke guy, and McDonald's Diet Coke is the best ever. So, so I I go to McDonald's in foreign countries sometimes, um, but primarily just to get a Diet Coke. Well, there you go. Hey, thanks, Dick. Appreciate your being on today and telling us a bit about Rotary, Rotary and showing off that mural that's going to be in downtown Faribault that people can take a look at beginning tomorrow with a dedication of one at the Faribault Vacuum and Sewing Building on the east side. Again, on the east side of the building. It'll be an awesome scene when the sun rises in the east. Won't it? It'll be just awesome. Glistens yeah. off that I'm, mural. I'm, I'm all so that excited. Color. Yeah, me too. Hey, thanks again, Dick. Thank you, Gordy. Appreciate it very much. Dick Houston, past president of the Faribault Rotary. Monday, Dusty Dean's Faribault's Fire Chief will be in. It's Fire Prevention Week next week. Don't forget their open house tomorrow, 10 until 2. You're in tune to KDHLAM, Faribault, Minnesota.